Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and I'm sorry to announce but your train has been delayed due to a sudden onset of World War 2 and it is time for the propaganda cast and yes indeed we're also having a 2 versus 2 N Wolf Hetze, yes indeed on the fields of Wolf Hetze or whatever sort of fields with which coincidentally coincide with the train or two in fact rather large train station considering the whole area so there you go a 2 versus 2 as you know I I know some of you people love, and I suppose you know you love it too, you cheeky fellows. So of course it's going to be a rather more open sort of map, although the sort of dividing factor tends to be this bit of area right here, the two rail stations, the and all that, because they do create a sort of blind spot right in the middle of everything, plus the trains and all that, so it does create a sort of interesting feature, and you usually see finding that sort of either move towards here and occasionally towards here but it generally tends to be right here again sort of the shortest spot between the two bases yes indeed exciting or not not for me to decide and we do see a burnt up hamel car glider right there a jet truck was once in there it is no more so as the allies break out into fighting near some rail station right out in the middle of a training field where shall it be set I don't know Let's say Belgium just for the fun of it, and who shall be fighting? It shall be our good friend Tommy Gaga, who is completely Gaga. Or is he? Could be. At the same time, we are seeing Insane JB, his friend as well, with a headquarters leading the Americans, so it will be a combined force of the. Oh, I don't know. 4th Infantry Division, and. Oh. Let's be civilized, the 44th. Infantry Division of the British, who shall they be fighting in the north? It shall be Insane Oasis, who I do believe is an actually pretty good player fighting alongside Levision. Levision. Both are in fact Wehrmacht, both with their own little he Reich headquarters. And they shall be fighting for the 2nd Panzer Division, doing its best to sort of hold the area. And why not get on with it? Hooray! We'll of course have to see what this sort of will lead to. Will it be support? Will it be aggressive? Will it be bold? Will it be daring? Will it be exciting? Will I shut up? No. There are my quarters going up. One. One. Two. There we go. In fact, sitting up right there close to the machine gun bunker right there. And also close to sort of the exit area. Rather interesting right there. Other pioneers heading towards the east. Numerous pioneers probably going to be working on that since that will be a bit delayed due to the sort of late back position or at least far away from the Reich headquarters. And barracks being set up right there and of course one thing to note quickly you can in fact build on your allies territory of course be careful with that. Since you don't actually want him to sort of be like hey mate I was supposed to build there. Of course as the British that's going to be less of an issue. So it doesn't really make a difference and we are seeing this fuel point sort of being taken and that's in fact not unusual. Why? Because then the British will usually park his truck right here which of course means he can be taking a point but the way to actually make it free will actually have to mean you have to get behind this sort of formidable fortification in the form of the train station which of course is a bit of a nasty thing. And also makes it a lot harder to actually budge them out since of course they'll usually also tend to put up a mortar pit right behind the train station. And Wehrmacht quarters are up, Volkswagen is arriving on the field. Barracks up, so no weapon support center, silliness. Engineers heading towards the west, British troops heading towards the center. Infantry section, no reconnaissance or brain cows, and looks like they're charging right ahead. Volkswagen is have to move in to deal with it. MG42 moving in as well. Volkswagen is opening up from behind a tree. Pioneers getting out of there, rather realizing they can't fight all these British troops, and the Volkswagen is do the same. What remains of the 2nd Panzer Division, which has been hastily reinforced with whatever troops could be found at hand, are uh, doing their best, but will it be enough? And now they're taking up position in the train station, perhaps hoping to catch a train to Berlin, who knows, but it won't do them anything. Right from the running straight into the front of the rail station, but they do, of course, rather realize there's no windows at the sides, and of course take up positions there. Good show, Mr. Insane JB. <laughs> And Pioneers are sitting down some sandbags right there, but they are coming under fire a bit, but will they be swift enough? And of course not a bad idea to sort of sit up there, and of course that's, let's just briefly pause here again. That is, in fact, a not entirely unusual tactic you actually see used to take points when it's in a rather sort of, when I don't like this, it seems a bit of a hostile territory, a bad neighborhood. What do you do? You place down some sandbags close up to the point. 
that favors your sort of direction and then you take the point from the safety of the sandbags makes it a lot easier and makes your troops a lot less exposed keep that in mind Ralfman sort of unsure what to do Pioneers getting inside opening up MD42 joining in deep on the field Infantry protection though flanking in Fotskarnir so moving in to protect the flank of the MD42 but the MD42 is awfully exposed and a deep mo motorcycle moving in from the vision and the Pioneers are getting rushed by Ralfman forcing them out Fotskarnir is finding a way from behind the hedges and shrubbery and all that British troops running away, bike and Fulskani is charging in, keep moving in to support the riflemen. Finding where the Fulskani is here and the pioneers are still hiding, hiding in the train station, looking for the train table to tell them when their f the next train to Berlin goes. Motorcycle rather heroically charging in uh, and driving in circles, my goodness, Jeep coming under fire. Brent Carey arriving on the field. We do also see a lieutenant has arrived somewhere, but he seems to be sort of sticking away from the fighting or what? No, he's sneaking behind. Very bold, but he could also end up as a very dead lieutenant. Fosgan is out in the open, but they are pulling back towards the cover. Fuel point right there is in the hands of the Wehrmacht. Looks like they are going for a rather wide front down the east. That's actually a bit more unusual and can also be a bit more dangerous if the, so they sort of fight, get too focused up here and then they sort of forget here. Could end up with them getting surrounded. The Bren carrier taking quite a bit of fire. Bike moving in and the bike is an excellent weapon to use against Bren carriers, by the way, it can do quite a bit of damage, and if you're sort of faced with a Bren carrier, get a bike, knock it out. Or Schwimmwagen. Bren carrier knocked out, British troops, some of them not, do not make it out of there. Jeep and engineers holding the line. Pioneers moving in, false grenadiers charging in everywhere. In fact, looks like Levision has gotten some false grenadiers of his own. Quite a few false grenadiers, in fact. MG42 advancing in, pioneers under fire from engineers. Sniper now on the field from Insane Oasis. And. Jeep gone up in smoke, could be sandwiched by Pioneers rather swiftly, so could the bike, that's certainly not a bad idea, and there we go, right at it, good show there, Mr. Oh, Levision, a bit hard to see, let's return to a slightly normal sort of line of sight, rather heavy fighting, British infantry pushing forwards now under the supervision of the Lieutenant MG42 covering, false Grenadiers and mass firing away, Sniper also, but he's getting hunted down, this looks like to be quite a fight escalating right here at the front lines, right by the train stations. British reconnaissance section sneaking about but finding itself too far ahead, getting sniped, getting gunned down, everybody is dying. German, Brits, Americans, Belgians, I suppose, if they're hiding inside the houses and one shot accidentally hits them, I suppose. Fosgan is finding away from the cover of the brain care, which of course can be salvaged. And we are apparently seeing a mortal pit getting up right there, in fact. Ready to bombard the Wehrmacht position there, that's going to end up a bit nasty. In fact, the bunker will... A bunker is being set up and it's right in the line of fire, oh dear. Further troops advancing in, another MG42. Creek barrier going up for Levision. None of the sort going up for Insane Oasis. And we are seeing a weapon, su weapon support center arrive and moving in through the south, but running straight into full sky this Defensive is up for Insane Oasis. For the Fatherland Pops, explaining them to the vitality and the necessity of... Holding this area. Hussar. And looks like the British are making ready for another assault. Mortars ready. Rifle grenades are ready. Grenades flying through the air with terminal velocity. And in a reconnaissance section moving in. For the Fallen still up on this MG42, which is apparently not sure what to do. It's rather caught out in the open. Mines going down from the vision. Bren carrier being salvaged for munitions. Whew. And something goes up. Apparently a train cut, but that's it. British are moving in here where there's absolutely no Wehrmacht present while they are heavily focused there. More bunkers going down. Shall be interesting. Again, they look like they're sort of trying to make a sort of fortified line right here and of course press through here. And of course there won't be any sort of train stations in the way. But at the same time though, this area is now quite exposed. MG42 in the train station. But of course, lack of windows means it can't actually head back. Looks like a half track is moving in. So in the car, Fartax found on I and the sniper, oh dear, the sniper, the poor sniper, gun down, rifle grenades flying out, the MG42 gunners, medic packs being used on both of them, and they're setting up awfully close, oh dear, the rifle grenades could be doing quite a bit of damage right there, pioneers moving in as well, something's getting gunned down, and the MG42s are rather exposed, one MG42 could in fact be lost, false grenades running away, half track moving in, false grenade team makes it out of there, just barely and the half track charges in but there's absolutely no man one manning the guns that's pretty unfortunate and the americans are pushing on hard and medics are pulling in the wounded it looks like or have they been shot it's a bit hard to see no there we go pulling in wounded pioneers and false grenadiers 
Half-Jack sort of absorbing all the fire. Bretchen now holds an MG42. And looks like a fresh counter-attack is moving in. Grenadiers from Division. Pioneers from Insane Oasis. Medics getting gunned down by someone who's breaking the Geneva Convention. Grenades being flung at the MG42 inside there. Mines getting hit. Further losses for the Allies. And let us go have a look at Insane JB. So far only three infantry teams and an engineer team. That's certainly some heavy losses. But at the same time though, he's going for the motor pool. We'll probably be seeing some armored cars. There we go. An M8 break. Half track once more dashing in. Guns have finally been manned. Riflemen out in the open taking heavy losses. But there's no anti-tank assets and a grenadier team has been reformed. Though heavily wounded and still under fire from the dreaded mortar pit. Blasting away. Casualty clearing station going up. We'll be able to recover some of all those wounded. Very nasty. And false grenadiers moving in. More false grenadiers. False grenadiers. MD42. That is. Not really. It looks like a Kampfkraft center going up for Levision. No anti-tank assets though as of yet. Medic bunker coming under heavy fire. There's another bunker here which is doing nothing. Rifleman trying to secure this area here which has been under Wehrmacht supervision. half track once more in dire need of someone to crew it. And it's guns, grenadiers from all sides and false grenadiers moving in. Establishing a safe battle line but they're awfully clumped up and of course there's a mortar nearby and this is rather their problem. Rifle grenades flying in causing heavy losses to grenadiers. False grenadiers down. Those rifle grenades really has to be taken into account. They can do a lot of damage if they hit. Of course hitting then is sort of the key. Number two, force gun inside the train station though, coming under fire, actual fire, M8 fire, Wehrmacht force is not holding up too well, Panzer Rex flying, force gun is inside the train station, need to get out of there, looks like a pack is moving in, mortar rounds continue to fly around, and grenades flung at this rather huge clump of British infantry, killing of no one, half pack still acting as reinforcement point, which is certainly good, but his guns could do with a bit of manning, Medic still pulling in the wounded to cause perhaps create a few more rifle grenadier teams. MD42 and pack sneaking in through the rear. And we are seeing the Sturm Armory is up. Rifleman once more charging hit M8 blasting away. Grenadiers, false grenadiers desperately holding the line, but they have absolutely nothing to really hold on to. Only grass, tall grass and a few trees, but that's nothing against this huge force. They need something. MD42 opening up. Putting down the British. They're 22 for the lieutenant. British infantry, ch American infantry charging in from the south while the British are handling on the north. Mortar rounds flying. MG42 exposed. German mortar now on the field. Grenadiers and half tracks have to move in to deal with the British assault in the north. And looks like the entire Wehrmacht force is getting surrounded in the center. This is a pincer maneuver. Very nicely handled. The Wehrmacht forces are cut between an American and a British force taking quite a few losses the medic bunkers are doing what they can but there's simply not enough medics to pick up the wounded and they're getting killed themselves flame first burning some bunkers mortar rounds clearing out the others and looks like a counter attack is going in or not I'm not entirely sure and allied medics are getting shut down it seems like medics are dying on all sides British MG42 sending up and let us switch over to insane oasis break At least they're sticking to sort of the same area rather than spread out over the entire map. Soon the Kraftfahrzeug 234, what would become the Puma with an upgrade moving in. Opening up on the right, who have rather exposed themselves now to the auto cannon and MG4 to fire off the Schwerer Panzer Spielwagen. MG42 covering, pack firing away, mortar rounds landing on the now British positions. Mortaring them, but the German mortar might command the fire. Panzer Direct taking up position in the train station. Could be opening up on the mortar pit. Will it do so? And we're seeing a Stuart light tank moving in. Grandiers getting up. False Grandiers holding the line. Reinforcing from the half track. But they are still exposed. They need cover. And they might of course be hit by a mortar bridge attack. Now swooping around the train station. Grandiers getting inside the building once more. Panzer Rex flying. British are charging. No, nothing to really help stop the attack. The half track can do nothing. Stewart and M8 charging ahead. MG42 keeping other bits of the German force tied down. The Puma is nowhere to be seen, getting repaired apparently. Grandiers retreating, running for the life as tracer rounds from the 50 caliber fly in. Mortar rounds landing amongst the British troops. 
Half track still not doing much. False Grenadiers getting slaughtered by Brenfire. Grenadiers in the north, Grenadiers in the south. Pantrax here and there. MD 42s. British Mortar is looking a bit dicey. British MD 42 getting grenaded. And now making a retreat. One Pantrax rocket could be knocking out this mortar in placement. The M8 firing away at the mortar, which is not looking good. Grenadiers firing away their own, but they need to get out of there. There we go. British Mortar knocked out. Grenadiers knocked out. Mortar knocked out. American troops still sneaking about in the south. Grenadiers getting suppressed. Nibbleworth are firing away. Howling from Insane Oasis. Puma charging right into the mess. Opening up on the engineers. Taking fire from the M8 though. And it cannot respond in kind. Lacking the gun to do so. Anti-tank assets are in severe lack among the Wehrmacht forces, at least something that can deal with the M8 without getting knocked out by a mortar, but that is, at least for now, out. Casualty clearing station still pulling in the wounded. Lots of wounded actually pulling in with, with what with American and British wounded. Pushing on in the west, captain singing about. This Stuart Light tank and the M8 is in need of repairs. Whew, and looks like we are having a small lot in the fighting, the second Panzer Division and the combined Allied and British force sort of having a break. Mortar could be recruited by someone. Nebelwerfer still there. Kampfkopf center going up. Puma moving in, opening up on these Brent Gunners. So the MD42 apparently from somewhere, but where? Apparently, no. I'm no idea. Oh, wait, there we go. I missed it. And looks like. Oh dear, Volksgrenade team was lost. Medics killed. Other false grenades are retreating. And anti tank are now opening up on the third medic bunker, which has been constructed. I can't help but feel that perhaps it would have been done better to be a bit sort of more secluded, a bit less obvious target. And grenades getting once more into the train station, opening up on something. Pantrax flying at the Stuart Light tank. Lots of grenadiers, but they're taking heavy fire. Rifleman out in the center of everything, getting gunned down. MD 42 needs to get out of there. And some grenadiers are caught behind enemy lines, getting gunned down by rifle grenades, Bren guns, and everything else. Heavy infantry losses for insane oasis. Grenadiers inside there getting scorched as well, need to retreat. Nebel Werfer slowly advancing, but it has to be careful, it does not advance too far. Another bunker going down. Half track reman once more. M8 firing away veteran C2, my goodness, that means in fact, besides being fast, it also increased in penetration. Jolly good show there. British are pushing forwards in the east once more. Puma moving in, opening up on the British troops. Grenadiers also doing their best with For the Fatherland actor once more. Extolling the virtues of holding the line, of following orders, of not dying. Whew. Puma and Grenadiers doing what they can, but it is simply not enough. The Puma lacks the rate of fire to really deal with all of these British troops. The Grenadiers doing their best, but they again do not have the firepower. As 242 is needed, but alas, Insane Oasis went for defensive rather than Blitzkrieg. And let us go up to Olivision, who has no doctrine as of yet. Five command points, but no doctrine. That could be really nasty. American sniper firing away, but taking quite a bit of fire. Could almost be gone, but no, he makes it out of there. Half track charging in. Ren Gunners on the flank, half track out of control, hit by the 57mm anti tank gun. Grenadiers getting slaughtered as they charge in. Ren Gun team could be knocked out soon. Nebelwerfer are firing away. Where shall it hit? Where shall it hit? Heavy losses for all sides. MG bunker now up. It seems not a medic bunker anymore. And heading right on the British main sector by the headquarters command truck. False Grenadiers charging in. Engineers right out the front, taking fire. Grenadiers, False Grenadiers not gaming up. And we are seeing terror going up. We are seeing Inspired Assault. We are seeing Firestorm. Will they be using Inspired Assault? And looks like the Firestorm going down here on the British Strong Point by the MG42. And the anti tank gun is moving straight into it. And there we go. Incendio rockets landing. Knocking out an anti tank gun. Might even knock out the MG42. Oh no. Apparently, MD42 makes it out of there just barely, but the Stuart Light tank has taken quite a beating as well. One shot and it main gun destroyed. Ah. The 
Wehrmacht forces are still pushing onwards, but things are looking a bit tenuous here. Absolutely nothing to hold down, protect their mortar and their Nebelwerfer. And they're looking more and more exposed as the rest of the infantry is being thrown into the meat grinder. The Puma is still there, but it is heavily damaged. And nothing else is coming up from Levision. No armor of any larger sort. Neither from insane ways as the British infantry are once more charging in. Rifle grenades once more flying in, and the German troops for the final and once more pops up. Grenadiers doing their best, but they are once more taking quite a bit of fire. And the Puma goes out of control. The anti tank gun knocked it out. Apparently, a fresh one. That rather diminishes the amount of firepower the Wehrmacht forces can deliver onto the British forces. Grenades flying, mortar rounds flying, never worth a howling. Trying to hit the anti-tank on perhaps doing quite a nice job actually catching it and then it's send the an inferno and it does pull out but it runs more into more fire and some crew members might be lost. Flag 88 now on the field anti-tank cr crew dies burned alive cooked flag 88 apparently on the field the dreaded flugzeug up there canone 8 8 Opening up all the allied positions, able to do quite a bit of damage, should not be underestimated. Could end up very badly, although he might have wanted a bit slight better position at the sort of British positions, but at least he has one, although question if how for how long. Mortar pit is up once more. Rather grenades flying at the grenadiers. Anti-tank on recruit by false grenadiers. The others will have to get out of there most quickly. Sabers on the field. And looks like we're having some artillery somewhere. No, it's just mortar rounds. I thought a 25 pounder was up or a howitzer of some sort. Oh dear, this is looking bad for the Germans. They have, in fact, again, as a sort of fear would have them, they've exposed this area and now the British are moving in, encircling, flanking about this. What remains of the strong point and the Nebelwerfer has been cleaned out. Leaving it fresh for the taking for the Allied forces. Mortar team needs to get out of there. It's trying to get away, but it's cleared out. Volkskrani is the only thing to hold the line. The Flag 88 can't even open up. Another German mortar is nearby, but will it survive? And now the Volkskrani are getting slaughtered. Oh dear. Not looking good, and the Americans are pushing on from the south. Ensuring that the Germans can't shift towards the north. This is looking really terrible. And a firestorm going down somewhere. Right there. But it is too late. The British forces have already moved on. They were too slow in targeting. German infantry throwing grenades. Killing a few British troops. But they are taking absolutely heavy losses. Incendia rockets everywhere. Artillery. Mortar team number two. Scorched flag 88. Desperately firing away. Grenadiers. Foot grenadiers doing all they can. Pioneers slaughtered. This is not looking good at all. An absolute disaster. Unmitig only mitigated by the sort of daring efforts of the false grenadiers and grenadiers desperately holding the line. But some of them are getting lost. And now this lieutenant has veterans with three, making him a very dangerous lieutenant, making him a very hard to kill lieutenant. As, and I'll just briefly pause for this, lieutenants, as they gain more veterans, and let's just get this sort of action sequence with your know, explosions in the background, they get harder to kill and get harder to hit. Actually, quite a substantial bonus. Returning to the fight, artillery going down on the German position. Flag 88 is decrewed. Only one grenadier is right now here. This is looking very, very bad for the Wehrmacht. Bunker is knocked out. Flag 88 not looking too good either. It's on fire. It's on everything except safe territory. And insane Oasis forces have absolutely been devastated. Only in two infantry teams, a recruit anti-tank gun and a pioneer team. The enemy is seizing our territory. And the vision is looking pretty bad as well. Only two grenadier teams with panzer tanks and two pioneer teams. The Americans and allies in general managed a rather decisive blow there. Rangers moving in, 
Flag eighty eight recruit by the Fort Grenadiers, but one shot from a bazooka. Let's say those rangers start charging in with some convenient bazookas. Apparently, the Flag eighty eight survives the first round. Misses with its own shots as well. Allied anti tank on opening up on the rangers. None actually hit. There we go, bazooka rocket knocking out the Flag eighty eight. Stuart advancing in. And Grenadiers are taking quite some losses. Cromwell yeah, nearby. Nebelwerfer yeah. holds away. Apparently a fresh one. And now the Stuart though is moving in to deal with it. The Nebelwerfer needs to get out of there bombarding the Allied positions. Rangers moving about in the front and we are seeing a Cromwell tank. Apparently the 43rd Infantry Division got some help from the 11th Armoured Division. Moving in with its Stuarts as well. And we do see a British Nebelwerfer as well. Which of course means the Germans will be having a lot harder time now that artillery has been going to be focused at them in a large, larger amount. The where the Allied howitzer is, I have no idea. Where is it? Tell me. Oh, there we go. A howitzer and a Nebelwerfer. Nasty combination. Hoping to knock out the Nebelwerfer and the crew is dead. Stug moving in. The Stug up tiling apparently being some of the bits left of the Singing Pan Division opening up. Firing away. Taking a bit of damage as well, and looks like a Panzer Command is up. And oh dear, I forgot to switch over to the Allies. And I do believe it's time for the mid game analysis. Well, what is the current situation? Well, it's not looking good for the Wehrmacht. They were broken, they decided on a rather bold and decisive maneuver to establishing a rather strong line here. But sadly, they forgot to actually keep it connected with the rest of the territory. And they got flanked in a rather brutal, effective manner by the Allies. They were taking heavy losses. A lot of their guns are now in Allied hands. MD-42s and a Nebelwerfer. Could even be a mortar or two. No, apparently not. Not even the pack, but still. Dangerous, and the Allies are certainly pushing onwards. They have not been suffering losses. You can note, like the Axis forces were, getting, were slaughtered right here. And now they will have to fight hard to turn things around. They will be needing some armor, which is good. But they will also need infantry. They will need some sort of coordinated plan. And they will need to deliver as much firepower onto the Allies in good decisive chunks as possible. And of course keep things mobile. If they get dragged into another sort of fight like that, they are probably going to lose again. And that, that loss will probably be final. The Allies, on the other hand, basically need to keep up the pressure, keep stealing stuff from them, and keep bombarding them with Nebelwerfers, howitzers, and everything else that can be used to bombard with. Even a catapult, if necessary, and of course found. Let's return to the fight. German forces are trying to secure one of our sectors. Panzer IV moving in. Pioneers moving towards the west. Allies pushing hard towards the east, at least the Americans are. Nebelwerfer for opening up has been recruited. Cromwell under attack from the Panzer IV, getting a few good rear shots. Nebelwerfer is moving in in coordination, but there's not really nothing to help. Anti tank on though moving in to put a stop to the Panzer IV. Rangers finding away at the rear, but they miss. Panzer IV rather realizes its rear is exposed. Stuart also takes a few shots. Now the Rangers are the ones to be at the brunt of this. Could it be? And we are hearing a V1 rocket going in somewhere. Where? Somehow the Cromwell survives this without a scratch while the Stuart goes up in flames. And the headquarters command truck certainly doesn't do too well either. Grandiers are moving in to support the Panzer IV. But things are not looking good. Large Allied force moving in. Stuart moving in from the north. And some veterans here could be used for those tanks. Pioneer soldiers retreating in the Panzer IV, getting out of the artillery, flying. Another Stug for in fact, while the other takes a sticky bomb to the face. Artillery flying in at their uh, positions. A bit of fighting in the west as the M8 veterans with three, meaning of course the 50 caliber gun and the 37 mm gun do more damage. This is quite unfortunate for the Wehrmacht. Second Panzer Division doing their best. Sniper sniping away, Wetsensi 2. 
Nebelwer for howling away the second Panzer Division, desperate to push out again to push away the Allies. Stukes moving in to deal with that M8, which is being quite the nuisance with Veterancy 3. Nebelwer for rounds hitting this area. Cromwell getting repaired by Allied American engineers. Panzer 4 moving in here. Damage engine on the Stug. Oh dear. <coughs> Lots of damage engine on those assault guns actually. Grenadiers and false grenadiers charging ahead once more. Another Panzer 4. Looks like the second Panzer Division is now trying to put its faith in the remaining Panzers the division can bring into Belgian territory and hold the line ever desperately with. Will it be the key to success? We shall see. Allied forces charging in. Lots of Bren guns. And the Stug gets buttoned up. German positions are getting hit by heavy artillery. Looks like the Nebelwerfer was cleared out. But did it manage to get away? I have no idea. Looks like it is gone actually. Stug with Veteran 2 giving it a machine gun. Nice use against infantry, but the Allied anti tank gun makes this a very nasty perspective. Firing away, misses. Looks like the Stuke gets out of there. Although just barely, things are really looking bad for the second Panzer Division. Desperately clinging on to the remains of the map. Having held so much, they hold so little now. Grenadiers pushing on in the west. Panzer Command still there. Panzer Force getting repaired. Stukes as well. And the Allies are pushing hard towards the west. Grenadiers rather finding themselves in the middle of the road facing a huge Allied horde. And looks like the Knights Cross are now ready. The Panzer Division are throwing its remaining most veteran troops into the field. Its most senior officers and what not else I suppose. Lieutenants, captains, whatever has survived from Falaise. Now getting thrown in with a machine gun and their finest uniforms for show and parade. Though again not really sort of the th how it was done. Panzer Force opening up on the... Oh dear, they're finding themselves in a trap. Rockets flying from all sides. The anti-tank gun with armor-piercing rounds opening up, doing quite a bit of damage. And mate, though, out of control. And Rangers charging in. Panzer Force taking quite a bit of damage. Stukes and Panzer Force opening up on the Allied infantry. Panzer Force, though, taking quite a bit of damage from that anti-tank gun. German armored forces are once more going to need repairs rather... S desperately. Looks like something's going on in the west. Stug moving in. False Grenadiers moving in as well. But did not go well. Let's go have a look at Insane JP who has gone for infantry. Not really anything from a British commander. Stug out of control. Firefly delivered the killing blow with the 17 pounder gun. German forces the Knights Cross were unable to change things in the east. Stug 3 has gotten side skirts now. Schützen, but they're taking quite heavy damage and even those cannot protect at least in this case against the bazooka and the German armored forces all the mains of them are getting absolutely shattered now alongside the Knights cross holders and whatever they can throw in Panthers could have been nice and looks like the Wehrmacht quarters are getting dim blown to bits by all this British armor Kampfkraft center also looking rather exposed. Panzer 4 getting repaired. False Grenadiers and Grenadiers trying to do something, but there's not much they can do. Grenadiers with lots of Knights Cross in support moving in from the west. Allied armor just pushing onwards. No King Tigers or Far Tigers support things. Anti tank gun getting assaulted by the Knights Cross cleared out in seconds. Panzer checks flying. And the Knights Cross are charging ahead, dealing with all these British troops right there in the center. Veteran 2, quite tough. But the Knights Cross are getting slaughtered, killed. Firefly having taken quite some heavy damage. The main gun is knocked out. Panzer 4 doing its worst, but Enemy. it's not enough. And the Germans barely have any territory left. Let us 
go have a look at Insane Oasis. We are seeing some rather devastating 200mm, 280mm barrages. Storm Armory now taking heavy artillery fire. Looks like the Wehrmacht will be having nothing left, or at least Insane Oasis will have nothing left except a Grenadier team and a false Grenadier team. Some extreme losses being incurred right there. Knights Cross nearby, a Panzer IV, some Grenadiers, and a bit else is what is left to hold the line. And no King Tiger to turn the tide as well. This is quite unfortunate. Volkskrone is doing what they can in the east. The Allies are preparing for another massive assault. Repairing and basically harassing the Krauts or Huns with their rocket artillery, which they so nicely managed to get from the Jerry's. Knights Cross taking fire, but they manage to avoid most of it, and they don't get suppressed because they are Knights Cross, damn it. Anti tank on getting flanked. Vegas machine gun emplacement controlling the central area. Panzer IV hanging about. Battle phase and pioneers on the way. Cromwell moving in, Grenadiers rather exposed. Anti tank gun wasn't cleared out, and it's now opening up on the Panzer IV. Doing their best against this machine gun emplacement. Knights cross holders flanking in on both anti tank guns. Only a reconnaissance section to actually hold them. This could actually do quite a bit of damage. Bridge are retreating. Registered artillery going in. And it looks like something else going in here. Perhaps a fire storm. No. What is it? Apparently allied artillery. The enemy has 50 points left. But no German. Interesting. Germans making slow progress once more. But for how long? Things are not looking good at all for the second panel division, whereas the British forces have been quite good in keeping up the maneuver, attacking from different angles, keeping up the pressure and doing nasty things. And looks like another V rocket is going in. Right in the center, that seems a bit excessive. Suddenly so didn't seem to do a lot of damage. V1 rockets are not really the sort of thing you'd use against mobile units, it's more like against artillery positions and fortified positions of other sorts. Lots of fireflies, lots of Cromwells. Not a lot of crowds. Panzer IV taking heavy damage for the British armor, charging forwards. Volkskrein is doing their best, but a large British force is moving in, blowing them out of their house. Hands of four desperately need a repair moves away. Volkskrenius won't be surviving this. And they are lost. Anti tank on advancing. The eastern victory point will once more be beyond the grasp of the second Panzer Division, which now has a Panzer command up. Ostwind on the way. Might be able to deal with the. Allied infantry, I suppose. Knights Cross moving Friendly in in a rather grand back. fashion. Lots of Knights Cross, in fact. Pioneers repairing the remaining pans of four. The best they can while the Knights Cross are charging forwards, taking a bit of fire. Across open ground, but the Knights Cross do not care about that. They have heroic armor, which means they take a lot less damage from small arms fire. Sabers retreating, anti tank on retreating while the others are dealing with those chaps out in the open with those Spren gunners. Getting inside the building, opening up. British troop taking up position behind an old truck, but they blow it up themselves. Oh dear, leaving themselves exposed to the assault rifles of the Knights Cross, who are now tearing apart the British infantry out in the open, forcing them all away once more, securing the east. Austin ready. Veterans with three. What does that mean? Well, it doesn't get an armored skirt or anything like that. But it does mean at Veterans with three, it actually becomes a lot more accurate. Which is certainly not a bad thing. But it runs straight into the Allied forces, getting covered in sticky bombs. Oh dear. And immobilized damaged engine. Panzer IV moving in, but it is too late. The Ostwind is lost in seconds.
My goodness, it seems to be calling in Knight's Cross as well. Hang apparently giving it up as well. Knight's Cross it is for everyone, it seems. Lots of tough troops, lots of assault rivals. Something coming out here. Could be a panther, I suppose, seeing, looking, seeing as it looks a bit slow. Artillery going down on the German positions. Nebworth with all the fun stuff and the howards as well. With veteran to one only. Let's go have a look at Levision once more. Still no King Tiger. Could perhaps have done without that V1 rocket instead of gotten that King Tiger. And there we go, in fact, Panther on the way. Allied forces charging forwards in a grand fashion. Pioneer salvaging what they can for munitions. Anti tank gun getting recruited by Knight's Cross. That's, I'd say, is a bit of a waste. That's basically 355 munitions to recruit an anti tank gun with elite troops. That's only something you do if you're absolutely desperate, apparently, and apparently insane oasis is that. Artillery going down, hitting his own troops to register the artillery barrage, it seems. Knights Cross pushing forwards in the east. Gunning down some riflemen, doing the, what they can with BARs, but it's certainly not enough. They are lost in seconds, torn to shreds, annihilated, slaughtered. And the Knights Cross continue, leading the way. German armor moves into intercept, it seems. Anti-tank gun is still there. Panther is on the field, still no armor, veteran C4, Levision, that's absolutely odd since, it, well, he's using a lot of armor, but has no armor veteran he wears. Well, Mr. Insane Oasis has already veteran C3. Knights Cross, they're moving in. Some taking up positions there, but they have apparently picked up a BAR, taking heavy damage, Panther charges forward, heroically doing what it can. Perhaps hopes to knock out some of those reconnaissance chaps on the flank while taking heavy damage. Knights Cross making their way for everything, moving in for this point, but now a large British force is moving in to put a stop to that nonsense from the Jerry's. Whew, quite exhausting match, and we're seeing a machine gun placement going up there. Knights Cross hanging about in the east. Anti tank gun is ready, machine gun bunker going up. Or at least a bunker. Panther doing quite a bit of fire. Panthers. The fireflies, I mean, moving in, opening up. The 17 pounders doing short work with the sloped 80 mm armor off the Panther. Much to the regress of the crew inside. Lost. Firefly, though, gets knocked out by dual Panzer Jacks, but then the Panzer Jacks themselves get knocked out by a bazooka shot. Hey, machine gun covering from the train station. Knights cross charging through in the east. Running straight in front of the heavy machine gun though, getting gunned down, Rangers doing the worst as well. Some moving in to clear out that Nebelwerfer. There we go. Nebelwerfer is, no it's not knocked out. And looks like another flag 88 is going up, perhaps relying on the last one they can muster. Or perhaps one they've stolen from the Luftwaffe or found, who knows. But beginning to open up once more. Allied armor under quite a bit of fire from what remains of the German anti-tank arm. Firefly taking quite some fire. Knights Crossroad is getting slaughtered. Another Panther arrives. Ready to securing the Eastern Victory Point once... Well, all Victory Points once more. Knights Cross running. Firefly out. But the... Flag is exposed. There's an MG bunker covering the western approach, but still someone could make their way past it. Vickers machine gun protecting this area. Rather sneaky, that. And if they do decide to move here, the flag 88 will be exposed as well. Knights Cross moving in towards these, clearing out some engineers who have laid down an awful lot of mines. Good show there. Artillery hammering away. Or is it the flag 8, which is now coming under artillery? Fine, never worth us. Everything else you can imagine. Crew knocked out. MG42 bunker firing away. But a heroic charge makes short work of that. Panther charges in. Knights Cross holders charges in. Flag 88 could get recruited. Knights Cross holders moving in with a vengeance. With a goal. With a purpose. With a destiny. And apparently they're going to recruit the Flag 88. 
This could end up rather interesting. Flag 88 doing its best, but really using a Knight's Cross Holder to that. Of course, they will be a bit tougher since, of course, the Knight Heroic Armor still applies, but still. Anti tank gun getting knocked out. German troops from charging right in, but getting gunned down. Suppressed heavy machine gun fire from all sides. Allied troops once more pushing for the east. We turn once more to Tommy Gaga. Knights Cross doing what they can, but it is simply not enough hiccups. So much going on, and only. <gasps> oh, bother! Flag 88 firing away, Panther firing away. Everyone firing away. With great vengeance and great tenacity. But it certainly looks like the. Second Panzer Division is doing what it can despite throwing and it's losing despite throwing in more Knights Cross holders, which has probably existed on the entire Western Front. Possibly even the Italian, not entirely sure if that's for the entire war, but certainly a lot of Knights Cross holders have been lost here. Artillery flying once more. Flag 88 getting flanked in Bunker getting flanked. Panther moves in. Knights cross holders once more charging in. Grenadiers. But again, I never really liked the Knights cross holders from historical purposes. Never really fitted in at any levels, and I certainly hope for future games we won't be seeing anything like that again. Although they're supposed they are cool, but still, yeah. Knights cross holders charging in under the supervision of the Panther. Everyone in the line of fire. Going for the central point. Hey, machine gun cleared out. Yeah, oh going for the central victory point, but not the northeastern one. Now the position is getting flanked. Americans have cleared out the flank. 88 could be recruiting at any second. Panther firing away. Oh dear, its rear is exposed to bazooka rockets. Allied British armor moving in. Knights Cross doing what they can in the center, but they're getting slaughtered. The Panther getting bombarded. Flag 88 getting recruited. Firefly getting blasted to bits and smoke going down. From where though, I have no idea. Panther lost. Bunker lost. Grenier's in the middle of everything. Under attack. And some more Knights Cross holders charging in. Apparently unsure wh whether their Knights Crosses are actually real or perhaps just paper cutouts made by insane oasis. This is a Knights Cross, but it looks like it's made out of paper. Shut up, boys, to the Eastern Front. At least I might be safer there. Anyhow, blast to bits. And that's just stupid, but there we go. More or less, Levision running away. Leaving insane oasis. And there we go, more or less. Playback over. Game over. The second Panzer Division has been finally utterly shattered somewhere in Belgium. The, the final blow delivered by the 4th and 43rd Infantry Divisions. The second Panzer Division is no more. And apparently, all the Knights Cross holders on the Western Front are no more either. A bit off. So what can we learn from this fight, this rather devastating fight? Well, of course, artillery is nice, but rather what the German forces rather managed to set themselves in the sort of... Yes, we have a strong point, but then they utterly forgot about the flanks. And they got punished for it in a massive manner. They didn't crew the half-track. I mean, I really didn't feel they got to use some of their resources in the proper manner. And plus, the bunker placement was rather off. I mean, they should have been placed them where it's a bit harder to get to for any side, but they rather placed them out in the open continually. Which rather led to a short lifespan of those bunkers. <laughs> of course, the Allies were good in pushing forwards on all flanks, really not letting one spot rest. If there's a bit too much resistance in one spot, keep it up there while the other one attacks from the flank and does a lot of damage. They did this continually, and the Wehrmacht forces 
just couldn't keep up with it. They suffered heavy losses. Constantly, by the end of things, unable to really hold things back. No minds in a greater manner. And not really good uses of veterans, at least for Le Vision, who could have used something more for his armor. And then it sort of just knights cross holders in a ridiculous manner, which didn't help anything. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this fight. If you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.